Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Good, the Bad, and the Unknown podcast. The GBU podcast is the soon-to-be number one podcast in the country. We want to thank everyone for tuning in to episode one. Stay with us because we got a lot more amazing, exciting episodes planned, which brings us to today's show. Today, Frank is joined by two current and one retired firefighters from the Boston area here to discuss their experience in the career. The GBU podcast is produced and brought to you by Mountain View Media. Mountain View Media is your go-to media production company for strategically marketing your business, product, or event. And now, we kick it to Frank in studio. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I wanted to do a little podcast about firefighters, and I, I, I traveled everywhere, and I didn't have to look far. I just had to go with three good friends of mine, David, Lenny, and Michael here. They're, they're part of the fire department, and uh, <clears throat> they've been there a long time, uh, Lenny here has retired. They've been, all three of them have been there over 30 years. Uh, three different ranks, and um, we're going to find out some good information through them. My first question to you guys would be, what made you want to be a firefighter? I think I can go first. Yeah, go ahead. Lenny's the one who made me uh, become a firefighter. He was already on. He got on 21 years old. <clears throat> and I basically told me, take the test. Peer pressure? <clears throat> a little bit. A little bit. Well, we were good friends. I listened to him, and uh, I was doing construction at the time. Those two worked good together, and, and I went and took the test, and the rest is history. That's it. So you never even thought about being a firefighter? Never even thought about it until until he, he had already was on for he, four years. Well, he, he, he thought about it, and what he thought was, that's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> what else did he make you do? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't Initially, I really didn't, I really didn't think the two could mesh as well as they ended up, you know, with the way the schedules work and all that. Yeah. It, with the fight pop and you get, you get benefits, you get health care, you get a pension, that when you're working for yourself, you don't get any of those. So that was so your thoughts. That was it. Safety right. net for financial reasons and... And, and it all it all worked, you know, and, and I ended up liking it, loving so it. So Lenny and Michael are brothers. Who became a firefighter first? Uh, we were both taking the exams around the same time, and I ended up getting hired uh, before Mike, uh, but uh, he was hired shortly there. <coughs> oh, so was that- yeah, we were in different towns, so we had moved from Medford to Malden prior to the test. He ended up in Malden. A few years later on, I ended up in Medford. But you guys talked about it, no one in the past, and your and your family was a firefighter? Or? Yeah, you know, I took the fire and police exams, okay. which are very similar exams. They were dated different times. So um, I, I think Mike might have taken the police as well, I'm not sure. Yeah. But uh, I did take one police exam, but uh, after contemplating it, I thought uh, the fire was a much better fit, you know? Yeah, and, and it, it took four years before I got on, so I kind of... Got to see how he liked it, what he thought of it, and uh, I kind of asked him when they called me, you know, what's the deal? And it sounded like I had nothing to lose, give it a shot. It's a lot better than I thought going into it. Yeah. You guys spent 30 years plus there, so obviously it, it was a great career for you guys. Um, what's the qualifications and the training from 30 years ago till now? Like, what did it take to become a firefighter? Well, after right? passing the, the test, um, really, for, for me, it was – a little different. <clears throat> we actually got trained in house, which is unorthodox. There was no room in the academy, and so they just formed their own. What type of training? <clears throat> there's there's a lot of um, it's, you know medical training. It, you know um, it's firefighter one and two. There's actually books they have to study and go through, and then there's there's live training where you do burns and you you know we had a we had a training tower fire climbing ladders. You have to pass this training. <clears throat> yeah, you they got to make sure that you know you you can handle it in uh, the SCBAs and and you know you, you, there's a lot there's there's a whole medical side to it and then there's the firefighting what side is to it. SBA. SCBA is the breathing apparatus okay. that you use when you go in. So you you know you breathe in you breathe in tank air and, you, and and you're not you're not sucking in smoke and and uh, you know it's a physical job moving ladders climbing ladders ropes. Lifting people and you know, it's it's a young man's job for sure. Starting out, uh, as you see, as you get older, you gotta you gotta you gotta really try and work at it to to stay in shape to 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 be able to to do it effectively. It's good you work in groups. Yeah. So as you get older, you end up with some <coughs> young guys. With exactly. So it's you definitely work teamwork. Work. It's teamwork, without a doubt. Teamwork, okay. both mentally and physically. It's a chain. It's a chain of absolutely one, on one week link. Team, it's, a hockey uh, team. Yes. Everyone's got their yeah. own job. Some people got their strengths. Some got their weaknesses. You kind of know who. What Do they filter is. that out in the training? Or? 
Not a, really. You know, a, a mental, see if you could actually handle the job. I, I think that happens organically going through that process. You know what I mean? The people get weeded out who really don't want to be there or don't belong there. And, and it's it's a few months that, that it takes for this all to unfold. And, and I think it, people find out pretty quick whether they can handle it or they can't. Yeah, I had the more traditional kind of, uh, you know, set up when I started and went to the Mass Fire Academy. And at the time, it's it's currently in Stowe, Mass, um, out west. But um, back then, they were in transition. And it was a, I think at the time when we did it, it was about a 12-week program. And uh, you got a lot, you know, jammed into you stayed there for 12 uh no we would commute every day it was monday through friday and we covered a lot of things dave mentioned about you know uh equipment training pumping ladders um you know a lot of physical work it's definitely a young guy's job um but in some communities you can you can uh try to get hired and pass there's no age restriction yeah some communities uh don't allow age discrimination believe it or not, and you can go in at the age of 50, and if you can get through, yeah, if you can go through the uh, fire academy, you can actually get a job. But no matter what, you got to leave at 65, right? No matter what, you got to leave, but there's been a bunch of Boston, uh, my understanding is uh, Boston uh, police that have jumped over and and thought the fire's a better job. Do they retire from the police and then jump in and get another retirement? They just just resign. They go to the mass. Uh, they they go to the uh, Boston Fire Academy in that instance, and then they jump over and they f- com- finish their years out as a as a firefighter. <coughs> well, there's been a, there's been a met number. Yeah, been a number that have done that. Oh, and we have two, right? We're, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. We get, well, one for Co- sure. Police officers that became. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Just because they. Now, yeah. Their, their jobs different. So thirty years, <clears throat> you guys have been there, so you've seen a, a whole transition of things. So. Today, is it the same qualification, same training, or is it all <clears throat> I think he's the best one to speak to that. <laughs> I mean, I think, the, I think the equipment's changing constantly. They're trying to get lighter, uh, you know, s- better equipment for us to use, uh, whether it's... Technology. You have to get yeah. certified for certain equipment? Or? Uh, yeah, certifications for all the technology that comes you out. You guys do a lot of medical, so it's certified for CPR. And- yep, DFib. Okay. Yep. Narcan. Yeah, the defib is in, in the narky and the drug. Those are like the two really new things. But That's just talking about the uh, the jaws of life, the the old ones that we had, hydraulic hose connected to the truck. Okay. In some cases, they were portable, running cords. Now, like a Dewalt, it's a battery, and the thing cuts through guardrails, rips off doors so you have to make with sure a battery. Like charge is someone. In yeah, charge. it's every week. Backup it's, batteries, you know, though. <clears throat> but it yes. He, you charge them, you change them every week, and, and there's always an extra one on the truck. But we have the power they have is ridiculous. We have yeah. ticks now, gas meters, which yeah. we have, the deputies used to have. When we got on the job, we yeah. were riding on in an open truck, not even inside a truck. <laughs> yeah. We were hanging yeah. on. I forget they had, they the had a bar. Yeah. They, basically, the bar kept you in it. Yeah, it was one little. It was like, you ended up in the street. Like a roller coaster. There was just a up. yellow bar. Yeah. That was it. That was How about those trucks with the steering wheel <coughs> in the back? It's that a tiller. Like, we a have tiller. one. We have yeah. a brand new one in Medford. Yeah. Oh, they still use them. Yeah. You can get around corners. You can everything. get around. You can go anywhere with them. Anyway. I watch them. They serpentine through. So do you have to be qualified to do that? Yes. You get trained. Mostly in-house training. In-house. But, but no special license. Okay. It's uh, trained inside. One thing. Mike mentioned the tick. That's a thermal imaging camera. You, you point it at the wall. And it could, if there's fire in behind the wall, it's like... It's like um, right. Yeah, it it shows you heat and temperature, temperature and yeah. and all that. Like gives a thermal you a, imaging gives camera, you a right? visual <clears throat> image, and it, you can see what's going yeah. on. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. it's, it's a tremendous cool. tool that we never had originally. Never had I mean, that. When yeah. me and Dave got on, we didn't have bunker care. I mean, yeah. probably you too. Yeah, we had a yeah. pair of boots and a long coat. Yep, yeah. that was it. That was so the pr- boots, that was the protection. So you had your your regular yeah. uniform on. You had a pair of boots that came over you. So there's a lot that's changed. It's changed. Yeah. A lot has. I mean, the more the more you say it, the more you think of all stuff that we had. We're gonna get into that now. Um, I want. I wanted to just some of the fire department cities. I know you guys worked in two different <coughs> cities. Um, they're made up of unions, and some are volunteers. <coughs> does that Excuse me. does that um, affect response in any way? Being a union member, a volunteer. So each town's different, depending on the demographics. Your big city, your rural, um, how it's been run, what size of the department there are. So. I mean, we're both in Medford and Malden, and they're kind of deeply, you know, uh, thick, 
thick yeah. district, so. Yeah, densely populated. Densely populated. So closer so to. You need, clo you're, you're part of a union. Those are def you guys are definitely. Uh, most of the most of the ones There's that no are volunteers in the cities. Closer to the bigger cities, they they unionized most okay. of the Once time. Once you get out into the non, not areas, volunteer. You might see some. Oh, volunteers. Up oh, there's different levels of volunteer. Most volunteers <clears> are still paid. <throat> paid for a call, or maybe they're you know on the ship and they and they get called, and if they get called in, they do they get paid for just what they get called in, but then they go home and wait for a call again. But uh, we we don't we don't commonly interact with uh, volunteer departments. Most of the ones in the surrounding communities where we worked, closer to Boston, okay. they're mostly or all paid fire departments. Professional, fully staffed, you know, year oh, yeah. round. Yeah. I see oh, yeah. when I was in New Hampshire, I had a house in New Hampshire burnt down. Uh, there are volunteers out there. The only thing they saved was yeah. the, f the foundation. Yeah, well, you think about the houses are so far uh, spread out and all that. Time, it's, it's hard. Call, so I, show up. I lived in Dartmouth, too, for a little while, and they had some volunteers, some full. But mm -hmm. the first guy that showed up in my house was in a pickup truck. Couldn't do anything. Yeah, there for a, a that's what they you know, did. Smoke, but they actually so just saved the radio foundation. Radios will say what you need, but but I think they do a tremendous job as well. They do the best with what the resources that they have and what they're given. And um, why you know, is it they're in a volunteer just because of the budget? Budget or? money, just money. Just money. Yeah, that's all. I want to get into that later, but uh, what is the protocol when responding to a you know an emergency between fire, police, and EMTs? Depends on the nature of the call, but you know, uh, whatever category it falls into, depends all on all three what of you show up. It's all regulated by our SOPs too, depending on what the call is. So we have different responses for certain calls. If it's a residential alarm, it might be two pumps. <coughs> Smoke show, and it's a different call. with police yeah. and um, EMTs. Police involved? and EMTs show yep. up on all Who, the who's in calls. charge on all the medical calls. So it's it's. You know, I'm talking about between police and again, fire. it depends what kind of department. Do you got paramedics on the department? Yeah. Are you just first responders? Are you EMTs? So it's basically by who's I guess higher on the chain of education. So if you get paramedics on a medical, they're probably going to be yeah. in charge. Um, but the fire department on is usually <clears throat> there first because of the way that we're situated in the cities. So we're spread out due to history to be close to every call and to have a minimum response time. So you normally will see us there first. There's no power struggles, nothing? Not really. I mean, when you think about it, I'll give you an example. Yep. Uh, you know, hazardous uh, materials incidents, you know, hazmat incidents, and car accidents, the fire department's in charge. So there's no confusion. The EMTs are there to, to assist, and the police are there for traffic and other purposes, right? Gather yep. information, do an investigation, but the fire department's there for, you know, uh, life safety. If there's a potential crime, you know, the police thinks, it, then they're in charge. So if it's a crime scene, we might still go there. Sometimes for shootings, we're there for medical oh, yeah, purposes. Yeah, shootings. Um, you know, we, we've got gear for that now. <clears throat> we've got bulletproof vests, helmets. Really? They, they, the they way things have at. evolved. Chelsea, with, they, yeah, they were shot at. Yeah, so um, it's, so, you know, it, yeah. it, 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 doesn't, it hasn't happened in Medford, but if it happened three towns away, what, how could it, you know, we, there's always the chance it's there. And on, on the medical calls, like Mike was saying, we show up first. Our minimum qualification is first responder, right? Every one of us is a first responder. We have a defibrillator. We can give oxygen. We can do CPR. We can stop bleeding. We have tourniquets. That that initial response and and um, you know level of care is very important. And then the next one in is is the paramedics and or EMTs who are we have some EMT, EMTs. We actually have a couple of paramedics as well. But you're always going to get depending on the call, an EMT or hopefully a paramedic, when they show up, they take over. They're, their level of equipment, they could administer drugs, stuff that we can't do. And we assist them. And then, yes, then we become the helpers. Give us this, hand us this, go get this, let's lift them, you know, anything. Getting them out of whatever room they're in, whatever floor they're on, out of a car, whatever it may be, then we become just just helpers, you know. So with the even the... the <clears throat> taking down a fire how much technology and equipment has evolved through that what has what like f you've been there 30 years that's why I, I wanted you guys here what have you seen different in your trucks we talked to about handle that. a fire yeah tactics and you know the techniques have even changed on how to you know apply water and then different pumps coming out of the water system well, the nozzles are a little nozzles, different yeah. but i think what lenny's talking about in the technique is before, you used to ventilate open windows, and now they have all these this research that's that you know closed doors, contain it, keep everything locked in, water in from the outside, and depending on the situation, things have really changed on 
the way you attack a fire today compared to 20 years ago, in 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 some day some cases it's like the opposite. Who does of what all we the did. testing uh, in Chel- in Quincy? What's that? A lot of the books that uh, oh the UL rated. Well, it's UL, but there's another thing. But they kind of do a lot of burns. Yeah, they do the simulations and they and they you know, video everything. They come out with the SOPs and it's and yeah. I forget what the name of it is. It's four letters or whatever. But they kind of do a lot of the research and then the research they probably do it on grants and then the research makes it back to us. Yeah, and I think the so, lo- a lot of the t- techniques change because of the the, the uh, NFPA is that what it is? Well, yeah, NFPA. But the uh, the temperatures, the heats, they burn a lot hotter. The the things that are burning in a fire. The materials, the materials. that are used in construction today completely different from before. Yeah. So it's definitely much better. more chemicals, more no, plastic, it's worse, more, it's worse. All the chemicals, are more cancerous, but less fire. <clears throat> less what? No, less, not no, it burns quicker. Uh, buildings are a lot tighter. Buildings don't burn as much as they used to. Oh no! Because of the 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 fire prevention in the sense of the, the warning burns. systems the and the sprinkler system, insulation. But just, if they do burn, it's a chemically Oh yeah, disaster. Yeah, the smoke that comes off of the fire. So what is it? Back in the old days, I mean, now everyone has a phone in the hand, so you can get a quicker call. But I mean, there was at times where people would have to run to a box and pull it, you know. And oh yeah. You would just yeah. If it's the middle of the night and people are sleeping, that's the that's the real key. If we, you know, stop a fire or if it gets away, the box the in the street. Of time it's been going. Yeah, the street box used to pull them. Plowing, boom. <laughs> <They're> gone. <laughs> they go nuts. Yeah. Fire department. They find yeah, oh, yeah. five hundred yeah. bucks. I'm like, I can't even see the fucking thing. <laughs> Full of snow. <laughs> it's so old too. You know what I mean? Uh, they still have one in Everett. Uh, to like yeah, knock it down. But some communities kept all their systems. A lot have gone. We don't have them, them anymore. Yeah. So in the beginning, you guys were just like, oh, I'm taking a fire test. I'm gonna become a firefighter. So your first fire. What was your feeling like? What the fuck did I do? Become a to be honest, like, like, no, I was excited it. on my first one. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty exciting. I, is I, it? I've I think never so. been excited. Well, you guys always, are young too at the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I've always had a sense of fear. But when I, when I thought about it, the fear, really is messing up because you guys will not. Especially with people you mess in up. The house. Everyone someone else is getting about hurt. You. Yeah, you just true. don't want. You just don't want to everyone else to be saying, "You believe what the, what they did? What he did? <laughs> they didn't show up. They went to the wrong house." Yeah. They, so that's always, I think, for me, always been the biggest fear is like. Really, you know, the fire is one thing, but also you just don't want to mess up because you'll never hear the. You're there for 30 years, and we love to tell stories because we're around all day. Yeah. Um, you know, when I when I got hired, I asked my brother. <coughs> I said, "What should I know going into it before my first day?" And one of the things he said is, "Don't tell anyone your business. It's a bunch of old grandmas there that do nothing but sit <laughs> around and talk all day." Well, that's true. There's that's a lot of gossip. Me, but it was, it was a lot good of advice. gossip. Yeah, yeah, but it's got to be scary to, knowing that someone's in the house and someone. You hope that. You so Lenny here is a. Uh, uh, you retired as a deputy chief, correct? That's correct. Okay, so yeah. what I've learned talking to you guys because we've had some time to talk about all this, um, you're you're mainly who the one who calls the shots amongst the whole the firefighters. The whole shift. Yeah, the during shift. the shift. That's so. Back then, the the deputy chiefs, when you guys are younger and the fire's going. And there's people in the house. Is is the deputy chief the one who dictates who goes in? Who? Yeah, he's the incident. You don't commander. just make. You don't just commander. go in on your own he, like a hero. You no. you have to be told. He's the incident commander. Okay. He's essentially setting people up where they need to be. He's telling people where they need, need to park, what hydrants need to go, who's feeding who, what groups going into the first level basement, whatever. But yeah, he's, that, that, he's really in control of. So you guys have actually been in houses on fire. Yeah, that's yeah. where you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, that's where you well, go. I wouldn't go in unless I had a hose in my hand. <laughs> I'm not going to be oh. a hero. I'm talking about going in and knowing somebody's in there. You just yeah, go I mean, in rescue I, mode, correct? You're just yeah. doing your job. Yeah. And you're working yeah. with a group, usually two or three yeah. guys, and you hope you, you got a um, smart group that you can trust. Yeah, it has and, to be someone. It's not as scary when you're not alone and you're with the I, other guys, I, and you know, yeah, you, you trust gotta help them. each other. That's all. Well, yeah. It is scary yeah. with houses falling apart and getting trapped. Yeah, yeah, your adrenaline's yeah. going. You're not thinking about that. Really? You're not thinking about that. No. You just yeah, going. But that's not an that. average job. I don't think people realize what it really takes for someone to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You guys talking like it's uh yeah we go in we say it's I mean, to no, the it's, average it's, person it's one of those things it's it's the one thing they th- that you're required to do so if you can't pull 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 your you know your end on that thing then you really shouldn't be so how many people have ever backed out and just, it, just it, it, it's some. I'm sure it's occurred but it, if you if you can't go inside then most people are gonna think or worry 
if you're next to them that they, they absolutely can't, that they can't trust that you're gonna help. You're right, gonna no one wants to go in with someone that's yeah. gonna run the other way, and not, and if you go down, they're, they're not gonna be able to drag you out. Yeah, that's why yeah. you gotta trust each other. It's, it's almost like military, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. That's absolutely. why you work with a group and you eat with them every day. You you bond with these, them. These guys are tight. I mean, these guys okay. are tight. They become it's family. A brotherhood. They actually come be, become closer than than family. I was I would, thinking I, about I that. I could imagine, you know. Yeah, because I think in in some cases they're with they're with these guys longer than sometimes their own family. They might see their kids because their kids have so many activities and after school and they'll see them for an hour before school, two hours after school. And then, you know, w when we're in the station, when these guys are in the station, it's 24 hours with the same people. There might be 10 or 12 guys, there might be four, but you're there with them, you eat with them, you travel with them. Everywhere you go, you're with that same Yeah, group. we all know each other inside and out. Yeah. I think it's important to be <clears throat> bonded together. It is. No, it is, of course. Like you know you can't I mean? trust somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you don't. Especially today, there's, you know, years ago, I mean, there was always uh, violence, I guess. But the fires, just like you said, going into even bigger buildings, you know, look what happened at 9 11. Those guys <clears throat> just ran up those stairs yeah. into the buildings, like not even questioning it. You know? Yeah, it was incredible. That was amazing. What they did. Yeah, that's a. Uh, <laughs> Takes a lot of guts. I think that a lot of courage yeah. to do what they did, and, yeah. and and especially after the first building went down, all those other guys going into the second one, knowing the other one already came down, they, they still did it. Yeah, it just takes a different different human being to to. Yeah. to, to I know you guys said you did it as kid, uh, you know, young adults, and but it still takes a certain character and a certain. But they also human build that. that. You, yeah. you might not go in that type. But when you work with that, yeah. work with those other yeah. people, they rely on you. You rely on them. Yeah, and you get the older guys or role models ahead of you that have been so there. When you come on your first year, there's guys that have been there already 32 years, 35 years. And, you know, you watch them. I mean, it's there's, there's people yeah. all the way up the way. It's, you know, teaching you, training you, mm -hmm. encouraging you, and you just, you know, you just, you, you just you, keep going. You're going to talk about what happened, good and bad, after a fire. And so you, you get to learn who did what, who, you know, um, so you, you do bond with these people and trust them. So let's talk about the range of calls, how it's changed from years ago till now. And you, know, who, uh, you guys answer the phones, you get dispatched from somewhere else. You know, you guys, sit, you, you're in the firehouse, you get the call. How do you get the call? From we, have, we, have a, we, have a PA, we have a PA system that comes over. There's tones that hit first, and the tone will tell you, you know, if it's a box or if it's going to be you know, a medical call, and and, um, and then we'll get the address and as much information as they can give us the nature of the call. And then, um, you know. So let's talk about a few respond. calls, how they change <clears throat> from 30 years to today, and, and, and just give us one of the most challenging rescue missions you guys had to actually do. Most challenging. I mean, I, for me, I've always thought when you, when you hear baby choking yeah. or something like that, you know anything with a kid, a baby that you're on extra high alert there. I don't, you know. Yeah, you're driving whatever, faster. You're, you're doing everything you, faster. I mean, me personally, <clears throat> it's like I don't want to go to a baby choke. I don't yeah. want to be there. And, and, oh. uh, you got to go there, but yeah. you say that don't, you don't want to hear that come over the thing. And, oh. and for me, you know what registers mm -hmm. in my head is when you hear, you know, at two o'clock in the morning, you hear, you know, people trapped, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't know who they are, you don't know where they're from. And you don't know you how many people sometimes trapped, like people in trapped in a fire. Oof. It'll come you know, in because so, that, that's yeah. what they'll ask. You know, the, the fire alarm operator is going to ask are the people in the building, and they'll put that news up. But that's the same thing. Now you know, geez, I could be responsible if I mess up. That's what I was talking about messing up. You know, yeah, people are going to die. It's serious, it's serious. Life. yeah. And serious. You, you're going to have to carry that. Good adrenaline. Adrenaline. <clears throat> oh, my huh. oh. Adrenaline. Yeah. yeah. You can lift a lot of weight when uh, when you get calls like that. You guys, actually, I know you. Your shift is entails of what. Uh, 20, 48 hours? 24, 24 hours. Is usually two, 24 hours. Yeah, 24, two days off, 24, and then the rest of the week. This was similar, but a little different. Yeah. So you're actually on edge for the, those whole... Mm, no, you try, to, you try to wind down. You wind down. Yeah. And then the call comes in, and depending on what it is, and sometimes you think, oh, this might be a BS call, and it turns out to be something major. But you're always in and out, in and out. It, it all depends yeah, how busy I mean, your station is. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. It's, some yeah. stations are definitely busier than others, and... In my, in where I am, <coughs> my station's doing like 13 calls a day, and there's another station in the residential area doing maybe three or four. So it all, all depends. But so responding to these uh, kids or anybody, uh, you know, what it, the medical, you guys respond to a lot of medicals? Every medical we go to. This, the, it, medical. it seems like um, 
the, the number of medical calls are, from when first got on till now, if it was 50% of the calls we went on, you know, 25 years ago, it seems like it's 80% of the calls <coughs> really? that we go on now. Yeah. They all seem to be medical. You think nature. we get healthier? I don't know. I think uh, people call for uh, everything, less right? important reasons. They call for everything. Like and what? it's still I mean, called almost, a medical. Could be Come on. Yeah. Yeah, Pink yeah. eye. Just I, we got some out. real. Can, if you fall down on ice, when normally you get up, sh- you know, 30 years ago, shake it off. Yeah. If I can't walk later on, I'll call. Upset stomachs. It's, it's called there's more liability involved. It's just people call for anything that's a potential medical yeah. automatically. Just some, of them, some of them can be annoying and then... You get the real ones, and you feel like, oh, I really helped somebody today. And then there's times you walk out, and you're like, we did not need to be here for that, you know. And you hope that somebody who really needed us a couple blocks away or whatever, somebody in our area, <coughs> and we were wasting time with somebody that had a bellyache and, and somebody's having a heart attack, you know, three blocks away, and we could have we been there faster. So let's talk a little bit on a positive note. Out of the three of us, you can share a story each if you want. Where you save someone's life. I, I it's actually worth it. The job's worth yeah, it. Yeah, no, I wasn't even work I wasn't even on the job when it happened. To me, um I, w- I was at a restaurant, I was off duty, and a guy three tables away, he, he was like in his eighties, with they just came off the golf course and um he just slumped over and, and his his three friends just were like, Help, help and I could see you know what only you know pulse and put him on the ground and there happened to be another off to the Cambridge firefighter in the same restaurant. And so it was like being at work. Two guys, we did CPR, and then uh, there was a cop outside doing a detail. He called 911. Well, what happened to him? He, he had a heart attack, oh. and they they shocked him, and, and he came back. So we basically had him breathing when when they carried him out of the uh, – and, you know, it feels good that you knew what to do because I looked around at everyone else's face. They were all scared shit. No one knew what to do, and uh, – it. I don't want to say it's easy, but it was easy because of all the training we've had. It was just like going to any call, but no blue uniform on. That was the only difference. Were you with people or just? No, I was. I was actually by myself, oh, wait, no. waiting for my wife to come in to have lunch, and um, and the guy just he he just he he slumped over. And Did the restaurant stick you with the bill? No, I actually got a free turkey club. <laughs> oh, <did you? laughs> yeah, I, I did. <laughs> How about you, Len? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I have one that, you know, will always stick in my head was a, a fire that we had early morning, and it was on Harvard Street in, in Malden, and uh, I think it was a three-decker, uh, three-family house, and people trapped up on the third floor. People. And, uh, yeah, and it, so it was, a, it was a big family, and um, I think some uh, visitors from out of state for a wedding, and, uh, you know, s- several of them were trapped when we showed up. Fire. One had already jumped off one of the one of the balconies or the front decks, and hit the ground. The next one was survived. <clears throat> um, was unconscious right. when we pulled up. The second one was ready to jump, um, and uh, we rescued. Uh, kind of a heroic rescue from, you know, combined effort of all the people that were there. But we were able to rescue uh, two guys out next and then and then unfortunately three people died oh on the same level they just didn't get to the window um and when they again a heroic effort but they did remove the other three remaining but unfortunately they didn't survive so oh, wow. three survived three dead they jumped they would jump it off did you guys catch them oh you went no. with the uh, one one jump before we even pulled up oh, wow. yeah one was ready to jump uh, you know, and that's 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 what the, that heat will do to you. But that one just sticks in my head, and of course, unfortunately, people died. And uh, yeah, it's going to be tough on you, you know, yeah. dealing with that. Yeah, with multiple uh, incidents that you have to see like that. He got the <coughs> firefighter of the year award. Oh, yeah. did you? Yeah. yeah, for that for that one. I think it was that one, right? Or another right. incident. Another one. Uh, that was a different. Yeah, different. Let's fire. talk about that one. Nah. You got the award. <laughs> <laughs> they survived. What's that? The people survived. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Another uh, that was a different that was a different fire, but uh, yeah. At the time, were you a deputy chief? No, I was um, at the time when the one the one that I just mentioned yeah. this, this fatality fire. I was just a firefighter, and I was 
you know, it was, it was, it was exciting, but it was, um, you know, it really grabs your attention when you see people, um, jumping because the fire is so hot. They can't sit, yeah, they can't stay imagined. in a window. You know, you, you begged them to n- wait, but th- the fire, it, you know, was so hot. At this I've never seen it personally, yeah. except for nine yeah. 11, they were showing the yeah. people just jumping yeah. for what? 60 it's pretty shocking stories. it's pretty shocking that means it's yeah. so de- you're so desperate i've never that. felt that kind of heat yeah. having the gear on and all that been right next to it but right. with the gear it's not that hot the only time that i had <clears throat> any sense of what the people lenny are talking about i was going into a fire it was raging and my mask got hooked on the vent of a radiator <clears throat> and it ripped my mask off come on because I was running by, I couldn't see, and it ripped it off. And I took a huge gulp of air, no and it it felt like I drank boiling water immediately, without even thinking about it. it. Felt I turned like around, burning. Oh. It felt yeah. I, it, immediately, I turned around. I ran Super. outside, and then I realized I just left the guy, my officer, by himself. And I put my mask back on, and I went and I went back in. But it was I didn't have a chance. My brain made that decision for me. You wouldn't have survived. No, yeah, but it's like, you, so when those people are jumping, it's they don't have a choice. It's yeah. just, it's just your brain saying that's better. You can't than take this. the heat, you know, and so that's that's the alternative. But yeah, I could imagine. Well, you might. Well, I was gonna say one other thing, but uh, you see these because um, they were talking about it just came, but you see these shows on fires and stuff. One of the big differences, like Dave said, you can't see. <clears throat> So you, you'll yeah, see, watch Chicago it. Fire or anything, yeah, yeah. and they show little fires here and They're there. They're always making out with chicks, the yeah. Chicago Fire. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't happen either. <laughs> <laughs> I watch the show. That's all they do. <laughs> Banging one in their locker room. Who's making out with one? I'm like, I'm a, I want to be a firefighter, too. Yeah, they share locker rooms. Too late. I'm married. <laughs> i got to ask her if I can do it. <laughs> You can be a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Just a volunteer. I'll be back later. <laughs> How was it? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, so I guess, I, I, I mean, I can tell you some This is serious so, shit. No, one of the things I never thought I'd be doing is delivering a baby. Come yeah, on. You must have loved that, Mike. The baby came out in my hands. And to be honest, we didn't do a lot of training on that. Because yeah, usually they, you know, they usually doesn't happen... Um, <clears throat> You know, it takes a little bit longer to deliver a baby. And usually by that time, I've been to a number of these calls, but the uh, paramedics eventually, you know, we'll, we'll do some of the prep, set up the blankets, all that. But the baby You were actually time, involved. That she was ready to go. She was doggy style. I'm dropping it now. And Hold on, they're supposed to be the other way around. Dro- uh, is that your right no, there I to think, make No, her? that's a, I think that's how they do it now. <laughs> no, I don't it, know. The, uh, anyway, that's how her... I think however they're comfortable at that point, yeah, right? What that's you gonna, what it was. That and, must have been amazing. And it came out in my hands. It, 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 it did have the cord uh, yeah. wrapped around. Yeah, well, get out. It. Yeah, it wasn't uh, blue or anything, but it, when it came out, it was twice wrapped around the neck. He or she? Get it. Out. it was a she. Yep. And, uh, but the funny part is, I guess, what it was is, now I got it all set up. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know what to do, and then and then the husband said, "Give it to her." You know, they never taught us how to look. So I you were it. like, "Wait a but minute!" First, I'm like, "What happens now? Do I cut? Do Repeat I cut that, please." <laughs> I cut the umbilical cord, but I, you I just, hold the baby. But I remember, like, okay, I get the baby now. It's breathing. We got the cord off. Everything's fine. And then he said, "Give it to her." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> and we we gave it to her. She put it on her chest, and yeah, it was. It was I, I, also, I, one thing I never thought. Also, the baby was still connected. You never cut no, it. No, no, we didn't cut. We we didn't cut it. But but again, that's what I was thinking of. <coughs> and that's when the husband said, "Wow." To us. So yeah. We Did you get confused at that moment? Huh? Like I was definitely confused. I wasn't because again, we don't do a lot of training. And yeah. Into a, yeah. We have a kit. It's called an OB kit. You know what I mean? And right. usually the EMTs. So do you have any training for this? Nothing. Video. No, 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 yeah. Do. But normally yeah. when we go to the calls, the ambulance is there. And, and takes over and handles it. So we again, we kind of help. This is the one time that in we were far away from the ambulance, probably four minutes before they got there. Okay. And she says, "I'm doing this now." And so we we set it up. You know, we got the little uh, thing to suction the mouth and all that. And uh, yeah. Who was in charge? I was in charge that time. Yeah. yeah. Lucky. Yeah. But I had a good crew with me. We delivered one in a in a van. It was in a van. Same similar. Yeah, really. Similar thing. It was in the CVS parking lot. And the people were all screaming. It was like it was like five people in this van. There was a there was a lot going on. And, but as we're driving to the call, you know, everyone's like, Pisky, Pisky, because I have five kids. So they're like, you know more than anyone about this. So I was just yelling hey, out stuff. I just watched. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but everything everything went well. You know, we just you know we clamped clamped the uh, cord and paramedics showed up behind us. You know, isn't that isn't that crazy? suction suction and clamp and maybe get a little O2 going? There's really not and, and keep the baby warm. There's not a, and, much and, else you and, can do. And the girl has no. What do they? I, I have a brain block. Um, what's the medicine they give the women? Oh, the epidural. No, Epi- this, yeah, yeah, no epidural. You don't have time for natural. that. Natural. <laughs> I think. I think all that. Because, you know, my wife comes from a family of six, and the mother had five out of six, naturally, on the farm, you know, yeah. in the, with the midwife and all that, wherever they lived in Portugal there. And uh, <clears throat> she was devastated when she came to America and had her last sister was born here in America. Mm. Devastated. Like, it was the most hottest pregnancy uh, deliverance she, she had to wow. have. The way they made you, you know, back then, <clears throat> you know, Whatever they needed, the, the epidural and, and the positioning, and you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they'll. I think a one lot of naturally, if but women, but that doesn't happen to every pregnancy. I mean, uh, no, they're all different. They're all different, but it's amazing how natural it happens. Yeah. Yeah. You're a hero, kid. I'm a hero. <laughs> You're a hero. <laughs> I'm sure you enjoy being a hero, too. No, I was just a spectator. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were right in there. <laughs> You're like, hold on, there might be a twin in there. <laughs> Let me see. You put the goggles on. <laughs> the splash goggles. That's what you need. You got to do those. Important eye, eye protection. Oh god, that is funny. Very important. So, <laughs> leave it ahead real quick. <laughs> the doctor. <laughs> So let's talk about, I know you mentioned that big truck there. You have the steering the wheel tiller. back, the tiller. So there's no qualifications, no extra license, uh, extra in-house training. In-house training, in-house training. In-house training. yeah. No CDL. Where do you go, the Elks? <laughs> let's go the Elks. <laughs> yeah, you Wherever. The lot. Cemetery, yeah, yeah it's around yeah. the block. Uh, you know, Pisky well, drove the truck. No yeah, CDL. You drive by. Yeah, no, I still drive the truck. Do you? Yeah. And we've had some companies come in and do some training. Yeah. yeah. Um, Does everybody want to drive the truck or just certain no. guys? No. Can? No. Is it some, some people don't like to do it. Just to back back in. Some people can't do it. They're just, yeah. they're, yeah. they're incapable. Yeah. Some people have a problem using the mirrors. Yeah. But. And judging. Judging because it's so. Corners, cars coming the other way. You just. You, you'd have no problem. You, you, you've got I trucks, trailers. I'd ask them, put some If you can, if you can pull <laughs> trailers around like you do, then, it, then it's almost easy. <laughs> right. Because you have a good sense of judgment of how much space you have. Based on length and width, you know what I mean. Speed. Yeah, trucks are a whole different beast when you drive. Yeah, but it yeah, would make sense to you if you got in one of those red trucks. It would all make sense. You'd be able. To and if you hit a couple, the guys that hit a few things, they're like, "Yeah, I don't want to do this anymore." Yeah, just keep going, right? And if you're real bad at driving, then you study and take a promotional exam, yeah. because once you become an officer, you can't drive. If you show up when Mike's working, he'll let you drive. Probably get fired, buddy. <laughs> let you go around the block. Take my kid with me. Just tell him you're a taxpayer. I'll take my kid. He's 23. Yeah, I'm he can wear my coat. We're the same size. <laughs> yeah. For a tour. <laughs> all right. So, all this, you know, I, obviously all this traumatic thing. You guys have to go see psychiatrists at all or anything. Some guys do. Or? It's available. We, we, we talk after the deputies. We'll usually ask the group, hey, do you want to talk to someone? Do you want to? So... It's all available. It's that part of the job. I mean, that giving paid. birth must have been, like, wild for you, right? It was wild, but I wasn't stunned by it. But, again, something with a kid. I've seen a SIDS death. I mean, that. but everyone's different how they deal with it. Back old school, I guess all men kept it in. Now they're more apt to talk. Well, all it's men, you know, fun. some people handle it differently. Right. Through alcohol, no, without a doubt. Drugs well, or as we grew up, we, we buried everything. Yeah. It's changed a little bit. It's more acceptable to talk, I guess. Yeah, what, I, they, what do they call it now? Critical incident, critical incident. stress, yeah, de- debriefing yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah I think when you name it, you, you, you like I don't know, and almost enable it to making people start th- overthinking. I mean, we kind of all grew up the same. We seen a lot of stuff growing up. I mean, we never talked about it. We just kept going forward. You know, I think it's just a but generational I, change. Yeah, but I'm an advocate for. I think it's better if they do. I think if, if, they you, do, right? if you if you discuss it amongst yourselves or with a professional, I think it's a, only positive things would probably come from it. Keeping it inside might not be a good thing for some people, especially over time. You know. Yeah, the people that you go on these these uh, nasty calls with, when you get back to the station, I and mean, you might. You might talk about it for three hours after that 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 night, or, That's what I'm or the next it's tour. Like, 
But then those same calls come back up five years later, and for whatever, you have something similar, or remember that call, and and we deal with it in ways talking it out amongst ourselves, and then with humor, making fun of each other is what we do yeah. all day long, and, and it's it, it helps. It works. Yeah, that helps. So I remember talking to you guys about all this, and it was amazing. I never really – I know when, they, when I hear three-alarm fire, five-alarm <laughs> fire, whatever it is, obviously – and you guys were telling me how you guys collaborate with other cities and everybody helps each other out. Um, why don't you guys explain how that works? Mike, Mike I don't think do people well, yeah, realize. The, the deputy's going to give all the assignments. So he's going to decide how much help he needs. If Because you guys are out on medical calls, or is that what the reason is? Well, well, no. If it goes to a second alarm, a third alarm, it means he needs more groups there. It might be a, a second exposure. In the same people city. Trapped. Yeah, in the yeah. same city. Um, and, but a, a deputy's going to decide that. And then he's basically going to tell everyone what, what chore they have, uh, what they need to do. You, you've got the D side covered. Y'all going on the second floor. Yeah, but they're predetermined responses. But I'm talking about other cities. Get them, how, yeah, do you get pre, another, how do you get another city? They're involved? predetermined through oh, dispatch. Okay, okay. They're predetermined. They're all written out. They have running they know, cards. Yeah, Once they, they know what the responses alarm, are. They already know who it is. Third alarm. Oh, they Chelsea, already know. It's, it's, it's already pre-picked out. Yeah. yeah. And so, this is because of technology. How did they no, we, we used to have them on cards. When I was in dispatch yeah. 30 years ago, you'd get a three-alarm fire based on the street. The I'd book. pull through the cards, and yep. I'd pull it out. Third alarm. Um, Chelsea, Mauled, and Everett are going to the fire, and Revere's uh, covering the city, and, and bang, bang, bang. And now you start calling these departments. We got a working fire on Main Street. Uh, we need your coverage at you know headquarters and so on, and the dispatcher is doing all this. So what deputy takes control? The, the deputy. He's of the on the city? scene. The deputy of the city. Right. Yeah. That the, that the incident. Whoever the shift commander is, he's in charge of the incident. But if but another right, but another we, deputy wouldn't come from another city, would they? No, we would hire another deputy. If we go to third alarm fire or second alarm fire, we'd we'd, we'd bring somebody in because say Lenny's at the fire, right? He's he's got that scene. He has his hands full. House is burning. However many different trucks and cities, he's got to tell everybody what to do. And he, that, that's a lot for one person. Forget about two people. Then you have a deputy that comes in and helps sometimes in a uh, fire alarm with, you know, all of those functions. They have to call another fire alarm operator in. A, there's a lot of phone calls to make. And really? It's, yeah. In the, in those, in so I'm bringing that up because I want people to know that um, the deputy chiefs have more responsibility on the ground. And the chief has a different responsibility. So it's you, the deputy chiefs are the ones who. Yeah, those positions are calls. so different. It's, it's more it's, administrative. Yeah, because everybody thinks the chief makes all the calls, but no. it's, it's deputy chiefs that. Yeah, do they're the ones in the, the trenches work. making all the decisions. That's what I just want to make sure everybody understands because yeah. um, it makes sense now. How does one guy take it? It's impossible, you know. A good example of how th that works, though, the, the uh, predetermined responses that we see in an incident like that was the Columbia gas explosions that happened in the Lawrence, the Lawrence North area? Andover. So I, I live in North that. Andover, and uh, it was it was Andover, <laughs> North Andover, and Lawrence. And so you had a massive response from out of state. They were coming from New Hampshire because that's oh, north. Wow. And uh, all communities were involved. Like, you, you just name one, they were traveling. They were either going to stage or they were going uh, to an incident because there were multiple buildings affected or on fire or explosion. So that's a, that was a good example of how well it actually can work because it turned into a major, major incident. But it kind of went seamlessly in some respects with the type of response and overlap that was already in place. So do you call off-duty firefighters to come in? At that point? Uh, most of them, you're taking everybody who's on duty. You're taking yeah. as many on duty as a, that, that are available. Sure. But, you know, crew with a, with a piece of apparatus, you know? So. So, I think we got most of the parts. And we talked about the violent scenes you guys get involved. I can't believe they give you uh, bulletproof vests now. I've never had to put one on, but they're on the truck. You got helmets like, and hey, vests. And I tell the police by we don't see no fire here. You guys are all set. I mean, I just see between fire and police, I think the job hardens police officers more than firefighters. You know what I mean? They see more violence, I guess. People like it when we show up. And yeah, you guys, like are, you guys are more... I, I've dealt with you guys in, in, a, in a business before. You guys are real 
We're uh, not arresting anyone. Yeah, we're reasonable. We're not, yeah. reasonable. They're only the there to help. We can't right. hurt them. The cops show up. They they, they have they're going to take the these people to jail, or arrest right. them. It's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because know? they people see, don't like seeing them. You don't yeah. want. Yeah. A cop but they have a different attitude because of what they see right. and what they have yeah. to deal with. I understand that. But yeah, yeah. If they're overdosing on drugs, we're there to save them. We're not there to arrest them. You know, it's it's that's so the the risk. Are you guys worried about health? You know, being a firefighter. Do they test you at all uh, frequently? They allow for special testing if you, you know, if you're a firefighter, and they have recommended tests that firefighters should take that maybe the average person take wouldn't take. I've done it before. Um, you know, certain things for like, well, you know, blood tests, cancer scans. screenings. Yeah, yeah cancer there's some screenings. nonprofit companies yeah. out there that that do it specifically for us and do a, a battery of tests that yeah. far exceeds what your primary care physician would do. Uh, because our rate of cancer is twice the average person, and that that could happen. What is it? Be, is it worse now or before? I think now. I think it. I think. I think. I think. I think it's worse now, now because of the chemicals. I think it's worse right. before because they didn't wear the right. uh, the the, the SCBAs and yeah. breathe Not because they were, they were smoke eaters. They thought they were tough, and they would go in and, and breathe in smoke, and and that made you you know a stronger man, a better firefighter way back in the day. Now it's the chemicals yeah. in the diesel it's, it's fuel diesel and that fuel kind trucks. of stuff. Yeah. And they used to park it in yeah. where you sleep, in where you eat. Where what do you have now? We, like still have we still have diesel. But we, they're, they're much cleaner now. They're cleaner, and we do yeah. have a system that yeah. has it back in. It contains it yeah. all. Yeah, I forget what it's yeah, called. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Primo it, vent, pyro vent. Yeah, 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 pyro vent. It, it, it takes in the – you hook it up to, the, the, to the exhaust, and, truck's it, going on and it sucks it outside. And you're breathing all that too. But to, to, to answer your question, it's it's cancer and heart disease. Those are the main ones they're tracking. You know, that's that's you know, it's a lot to give up. You know, to become a firefighter and uh, the risks that are involved. I know it's uh, everybody thinks it's just a forty eight hour shift, but it's it's a lot more than that, obviously. You know, I, I've I've always, you know, all the young guys they come on, they want to work hard, they want to get in scenes, but I always try and say, don't take smoke if you don't have to. A lot of car fires, nothing to save, putting yeah. it out. Sometimes the guys are getting in there. And you see a young guy has kids. And you, you, I, I want to always tell him, like, if I don't have to, because we'll all t no. all right. Two or three days later on, that stuff's pouring out of your skin. Yeah. You go shower, sauna, and it, the next day, it's like you were in really? a, a It's heavily smoking. It's just coming out. It gets yeah. in your pores. It's toxic. For two days, that stuff's in your skin and coming out. So I never really witnessed a fire and, you know, a house fire, and but in Medford, when I was living in Medford with the kids. Well, I'm, you had a few here or there, but I you weren't in town. Thank God I wasn't yeah. there at the yeah. time, and I you know, you there wasn't burned. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was <laughs> two states away. <laughs> <laughs> People profiled me. <laughs> but in Medford, on Washington Street, there was a, a six family that burnt down, and it was coming just down Franklin Street, right where I lived, and I was like, wow. I grabbed the kids. I couldn't even stay in my house. Yeah. I grabbed the kids, and, and Amelia, and we shot to New Hampshire. I didn't come back for two days. It was bad. Yeah, those are actually That's the worst That's when I ones. realized. I was like, how the fuck do you walk into a place like that? I don't care what. You must still smell it. No, sometimes Passes. there's fires when the, in, in, in the smoke banks down. The whole street... And you're operating the pump. You don't wear a tank in, in a mask. When, I, I but you just feel like oh, there's no getting away from it. Yeah. You just breathe in smoke yeah, for however many hours you're there. And there's nothing. Vinyl you siding. Yeah. You know, everybody's yeah. vinyl sided their house in the last I think it has years. to do with humidity and stuff. It's really Yeah, I mean, humid. obviously, you've seen it uh, Banks probably down. more than I have. Like he said, you can't. You're just no, in it. You're just stuck there. There's nothing you can do. Nothing. Really. That's it. You're stuck well, in, they, you're they've upgraded in. your suits and masks. Yeah. And no, but and when you're, you're, you're the people who come out of the house that's on fire, they're rehabbing on the sidewalk. The smoke's banked down in the whole neighborhood. It's one of the it's, It doesn't happen often, but if the wind's not going, like Lenny said, humidity, I don't know what happens, but it doesn't, the smoke just stays the wind down doesn't low. doesn't take it away, and you're stuck in it. And, and you're just breathing so, in. You know what's hours. funny? Uh, when I moved to, we had a house in New Hampshire, we were in Laconia at the time. And I wanted, I wanted to um, move, and we bought this house. And I felt like we were around all these old people. And What's wrong with old people? It's just, I'm like, Amelia, you made me buy, buy this house. We're around all these fucking old people. What am I going to do here? <laughs> and she's like, relax, relax. It's just for us. To and I hear some guy through the bushes swearing and yelling and swearing. She goes, go ahead, there's one of your buddies. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I go there, <laughs> right? I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? And he's fuck, fuck, mama, fuck. I'm like, hey, guy, what's wrong? I'm trying to get this rug at the window. I'm like, are you stealing it or are you putting it in? <laughs> he goes, no, I'm putting it in. I'm like, what's up? He goes, hey, Richie Paris. I'm like, hey, Rich, Frank, I'm next door, you know? I go, tell me you live here. He goes, yeah, this is my parents' house. My brothers, my sisters, we're all firefighters. I'm like, get out. Uh, Richie Paris was the union president for Boston. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and there was his brothers and then his brother-in-laws. And I became good friends with his... Uh, you know, he told me, he goes, oh, you'll love my brother oh, Billy. He loves going out doing water sports. And Billy was the one who taught me how to do water sports at the lake. That was wow. the first time I ever did it. Oh, you're Billy me is a... Billy McCarthy. Uh, great guy. Um, Where's, where was he from? Boston. They all worked out of the North End. They yeah. worked out of... Mattapan, I think. Oh, did you? But they were more, uh, uh, oh, shit. <coughs> South Shore. Um, Billy was an arson investigator. Yeah. So that was interesting. Because he says, they don't give you a mask the next day. You know what I mean? You're walking through all that shit, the stench that goes through, yeah. Yeah. and you're walking through all the, you know, all the, all the, everything that's burnt and everything. It's even worse. He goes, the firefighters that wear the mask, we don't wear anything. Yeah, and that you know he's had a lot of um, you know shoulder replaced. That I'm not, I don't know if I'm blaming what he's been breathing in for 30 years, but or the water sports, I don't know. But that was interesting. The um, the uh, arson division. Yeah, you know, yeah, you have I, don't, to I don't know. Every fire. I don't know much about insurance. That. Pro- it's a separate organization, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you got to take yeah. a se- separate class. There's a few guys that. But he was that still part with. of the fire department. Yeah, he worked right there in the north end. In, yeah. Um, the yeah, they'll call in a fire investigation team after the fire, and whoever guys are on the list, they get called in, and they go and they go and they go and they write up a report. Yeah, he's the, the great family. They're all firefighters, yeah. you know, and, and I learned a lot <clears throat> from them too. So let's go to the uh, most important thing: who cooks. <laughs> of everyone does. Seriously, you're stuck there with all these guys. Most oh, guys. oh, oh! Before we go there, guys, are, are there women? Because you know, fi- uh, Chicago Fire—they got all these hot chicks on the. On we this. we own, we have uh, we have one. We, since I've been on it thirty years, has been two. Oh, so what's two the women. ratio? There's not many women that. No, we have hundred and two uh, firefighters right now, and one woman. Oh, so okay. what are you going to call one percent? Depends, uh, community, community. Some could have you know uh, a bit higher percentage, but. It's just slowly, I think. So when we when we go on fires and we see towns from other towns there, yeah. I see more women on some. When of I first started, there was <clears throat> there was like next to zero. Zero. Right. Yeah, and I'm talking, you know, yeah. in the '80s, there were very very few. There were a few here and there. That just proves to you that women are smarter than you guys. Yeah. So, <clears throat> let's say they're up. Let's say they start coming in. I know it's different now. I think it's better off. Uh, they start hiring a lot more veterans. Correct. Yeah, I mean that's kind of the way they, the veterans get hired first. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, they, go to the top list. they go right to the top. In Massachusetts, yeah, that's so. a good thing because they need yeah, to. Yeah, of course. Gives them, yeah, it gives them the option when they get out. Yeah, so, I, I, that's one thing. Yeah, I, I think it's a great, yeah, great program yeah. Uh, that they put in place. It's not like that in every state, but yeah. Mass is great when it comes to. <clears> are you guys set up for women? Let's say I don't know how you got sleeping. We have quarters. Or some stations, I think. Yeah, station to station. You they modify them. Yeah. So, you know, it would work. Is it male bathroom, female bathroom next to each other? No, but they'll take one and they'll designate it put that female. Double sign up. That's it's, all. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> bunk sure rooms. They give the them their own bunk room, whatever. You know? the seat. Yeah. yeah so, who cooks? Well, who, how do you choose cook the cook? Them. How do you choose the cook? The cook chooses How does that himself. work? The whole. Ah, people, thing, there's, so. there's people that have just been cooking and. And they're good at it, and then they just kind of take over, and and then there's people that clean, and that don't there's cook. Some guys that make Every a good lentil soup, and he yeah. might say, "Oh, good, you get clean soup. now." <laughs> <laughs> I think I think they give everyone a try, and right. then really? whoever they know who the good the cream rises good, to the yeah, top, Frank. And when that happens, what do you who are you gonna go to? You gonna go right. to the you know the, the ham and egg, or are you gonna go to the guy? Uh, and some cooking? people have better dishes. You know, one guy's good on the barbecue, right. one guy's good at the chili. Some people are really guys. good at breakfast, and they only yeah. like to do okay. breakfast and brunch. You know, yeah. I learn one dish because they yeah. say, "All right, I don't do anything." 
and he might say, oh, geez, I'm going to learn this dish. I'm going to learn a chili yeah. and try it. Yeah. And I know when I've done it, I would always try it at home first because you don't want to mess up. No. You, don't want 50 you never hear the end of it. You up. screw up. They will no. tell you. Did you, try, did, you do <laughs> the, did you do the bird thing at home too? Just yeah, so I did the bird thing at home. The doggy style. I missed. I practiced on the dog. Let's do this again. Let's do this again. Let me have my friend tell me. <laughs> what, did you, what did he say, the guy? What's that? What did the father, the husband say? He said, give it to her. Give it to her. All right, that's how I do it. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. <laughs> Hold the kid for a second. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, shit. So how does that work? Does the city give you an allowance of food? No, no, no. no it's Don't all on our own. Do you pay for your food? Nothing. No. Nothing. Oh, really? Nothing. So what do you guys pay? Spring. So they provide a food? kitchen. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We bring in our old leftover pans or we buy stuff. We have a coffee fund. Everyone Our throws in so much money. Stuff. And then you go to food shopping and, and so everybody you throws pull in. in your money. Yeah. How does it work? Yeah. yeah. Everybody? Times, one guy will buy it all. He'll Denver. buy it all to yeah. cook. He'll buy it all. And then he'll say, geez, it's $100. Eight guys. Do the math. I know, but your shift changes. So you leave. No, no, no. So at, at the beginning of the year, you have a coffee fund. Everyone throws in, say, $200 a guy. And that buys you. Salt, condiments. your condiments, your coffee, your, your cream, coffee, sugar. cream, sugar. Mike did it. That's how he's rattling it up. He knows what the, he knows what the order is. Mike it, 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 He did. He, he was the, he was one of the best ones. They were all afraid. He was one of the best ones to do it because he had he had ten different kinds of salad dressing. No one else bought salad dressing. He he, he was good. Billy, yeah. Billy, your buddy Billy wanted salads every day. I, I would let him stop. That kid, <laughs> that kid can stop for a month. He'd be okay. Don't worry about him. He, he kept saying, "I want to get healthy." He didn't lose any weight. <laughs> the salads I made were like this. Yeah, and then and pay the cable, cable and Wi-Fi. We have to pay for that too. Come on, yeah. Yeah. you're kidding me! I swear man. to God, we got to pay our own cable bill. Yep. Dude, we have to buy internet. Our own is cable. We got to buy our own TVs. Yeah, own TVs. Yeah. Own TVs. Our own gas grills. So this is this is what gets me. I, I was on town meeting for a minute because obviously they didn't vote me back in, but <laughs> <laughs> racist. Because <laughs> I asked too many questions, they didn't want to hear it. All right. They always question the the um, the uh, firefighters, the, the fire department's budget. Always, always, like, and they would beat up the police department. They would, but cities like this, I would say, you know, safety <laughs> is way more important than, you know, you, you have to take care of uh, the fire department because they need the equipment to save a life is huge. You know what I mean? It's worth all the money. And, you know, police department, there's not that much crime. Yeah, what do they, they, they go to domestics we talked about? A lot of times you might not know it where you live. If someone who lives but near a fire station will all of a sudden go, oh, those guys are really busy. Yeah, they if go out a lot. on their route, you don't know. If you're not listening to the scanner, so I'm not saying it's it's busy here. It might be slow. But, but city to city, A lot city, of people don't know if you're in this quiet residential area. But, yeah, if you're, you're near a fire station, you might go, those guys never stop. Because you just hear them running you guys all the day. We talked about it. You just go to every medical... And I mean, this thing, there was what, 60,000 we talk about that people? earlier or today on live? Uh, which which part? Yeah, you did say it. If people, if people call you for, <laughs> um, for falling everything. down. Yeah, we did talk I, about I need that. to get picked up. Some, okay. Sometimes people see a box on the street. They think it's a bomb. They call us. Yeah, the people that, the people that have, have needed us in the past are not the ones that are going to complain about the budget. The people who that have never needed us... Other ones are going to be like, I don't need them. Like, until, until someone needs you, they don't realize how valuable the service is. So I missed something earlier, but I'll get back to it. Sleeping quarters. How about if you get guys, if you happen to fall asleep, who snores, that you can't sleep? It's, there's not a station that doesn't have that. That thing. happens everywhere. And there's hardly any so, sleep because the calls are coming in all the time, right? And everything's on a PA, so it's, uh, it's uh, yeah. you close your eyes. You're not in REM sleep. You're lights not, are on, too. You're not, lights come on. When lights come on. on. Every call, boom, lights go on. and, and like being in a jail comes on the PA. Yeah. But you, you learn to, like, just, just kind of veg out, and, 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 and you, you, you're, you're resting, but you're not, like I said, there's no REM sleep. You're not in a deep sleep. A lot, a lot of times it's really great when you find out it's not you and you don't have to get out of your Yeah. Room. It's a lot. You get a big smile on your face when you hear it's his station going out. Like, oh, that's not us. You know what's, uh, we, when we talked about it before when we were interviewing, um, which I thought was big, um, growing up in the city that you worked in, you're working for, and the experience you guys have, 30 years of it, you know, we were talking about an incident that happened and... You know, this. I think it's in many cities and towns where the street gets cut off by land or a golf course or something like yeah. that. And if you don't know, 
certain areas or certain streets and house numbers. Today, a lot of people don't realize how important it is to have your house number exposed. No, we, we tell people all the time. When, yeah. when you go there, and you, we have a hard time finding it. It's a code now, finally, right? It is. Oh, Before you can get your occu- occupancy permit brand new construction, new construction yeah. you have to have We didn't even talk about that. No, even yeah. when you sell your house. So when I would do the uh, fire inspection, whatever, for the detectives, I would always... Yeah, I'm sure anytime they can sneak that in, because it's, it's important. Important, it is. Yeah, my head, my head. I know uh, fire departments and firefighters are a big part of fire inspections on new construction and uh, nightclubs or restaurants, bars, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I think Everything. you were yeah, doing that. Yeah, I was in that. Lenny. He was, too. Oh, were you? Yeah. Fire, yeah. so fire prevention. That's big also. How did that work? Uh, you mean the day-to-day routine? Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, it was good. You're inspecting buildings. You did plans, too? You did the yeah, plans. you do plan review, and you, you get out into all these buildings, especially the new ones that are under construction or ones that are being renovated, and you issue permits in the in the office. And, you know, it's uh, the field stuff, I think, is more interesting, walking through buildings and, you know, uh, looking at all the systems and the way they're constructed. You know, these There's guys. a lot to learn, because I'm on the other side of it, on the construction side. I've never been in fire prevention, yeah. but I know from – a decade ago to now, how all of the rules have changed. If you're doing new construction, remodeling, the devices you need, the <clears throat> fire alarm systems, now a three family, you got to sprinkle all three units, central station. It's. I know it's a big expense, but at the end of the day, you being on the other side. That's why it, there's less fires. It's, yes. it's you know, so I, I, I get it, but the rules do change. A lot. Well, the fires don't get as bad because of... What do you mean the rules? What rules? The rules about what you need for hot, wide smokes, where you need them, carbon monoxide detectors. For the better. For the better, but... The codes. But still, it's like... I'm saying, the people who are in fire prevention... Do they talk to... a lot to learn. You just go from being a firefighter or an officer one day in a truck, and then the next day, you're in fire prevention, and you got to learn everything. No one's... There's no formal training before you get in there. You, get up, you learn, you go in there, and there's always there's somebody else that already knows what's going on. But you got to... Do they bring a contractor in to help you? No. no, it's the person that's been in there. That he was trained by someone else, and then you come in, yes. and then he's gone, and then if you still... It's a revolving there, door. Someone else. So it's, yeah. it's, it's like anything else. But there's a lot to learn. Yeah, I know. I, I remember I was pulling up dumpster permit. Yeah. You had to come down and... I think that's important too because some people put dumpsters on streets and then fire departments. You, there's 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 code requirements. So many feet from the house and so we come a long way, without a doubt. A long way. And it's I, like anything else. Something bad happens. Oh, we can never do that again. Everything. Now we're going to change the rules because yeah. we can't everything, let that happen again. Everything's regulated. Yeah. In this bottle of water is re- highly regulated when it comes down to it, right? Yeah. You can't do anything without some regulation. So how did you like that part of your your career? You know, it's different because because you're thinking, oh, geez, you know, I'm not going. Is that to more school. hours, or is that the hour? Same, in your same shift. number of hours, but Day again, shift, it's yeah. it's you're working days. You're not going on on emergency calls. Um, oh, yeah. so you split it up into four days. Yeah, four. Or you five wouldn't stay days overnight week. anymore. No, 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 no. Not unless you day were job. working an overtime. Oh, day yeah. job, yeah. Monday, yeah. Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, yeah. whatever. But the you don't is. respond to calls or anything no, no, unless they call you. Unless you take an overtime shift, you could still work there. Get a little rusty, but. But yeah, it's just, and he did it too. It's yeah. administrative, more administrative. Yeah, it's an office oh, job. I give it up to you guys. You know, it's not an easy job. And uh, I don't know if I feel safe. I, I, I do feel safe around you when we all go away. <laughs> it gets too dangerous sometimes. The compressions on you are going to be deep. <laughs> <laughs> I think they have been already. I go home, I got bruises on That off. means don't <laughs> drop. No. <laughs> uh, stay healthy. So I think we covered all of it. You know, nice. you guys, you guys, uh, you, you know, you're my friends. Here, you know, a lot of us don't realize you guys risk your lives every day, too. And you're, you know, somewhat of a hero. But so uh, also, if you want to consider uh, having a natural birth, We'll put Mike's number down on the bottom of the screen. Give him a call. Professional. <laughs> Just keep your husband out of the room. <laughs> All right. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right.